Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Cool. Hi, Wendell. Hi, Ingrid. Oh, it's comfy. Uh, it is nice up here. It is. Oh. Wait, you want us to switch sides? We'll switch oh, sides. okay. That's exciting. It's my better side anyway. Bad. <laughs> okay. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. It's uh, my first time with TechCrunch. It's the first thing I read every morning when I hit the office. Excellent. So, uh, it's nice to be here with you, Ingrid. Yeah. How's your CS been going? Uh, it's been, uh, as usual, very crowded, but lots of exciting things going on. Lots of you know, great meetings, and I've met a ton of new people while I've been here. So awesome. it's been a terrific uh, CES. Okay, I'm going to dig into what you're seeing here and all that stuff in a second, but just doing a want to do a little update on Intel Capital. Now, you guys um, were have been called the biggest VC in the world um, because you guys have how many companies are in your portfolio now? Uh, we have just about 400 in the portfolio. Which is pretty, pretty much a lot. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Um, so how I know that you were in the news just before you took over running it. You, the big story was you guys wanted to divest the thing. Um, then you kind of backtracked on that, decided not to, but to maybe downsize it a bit. So can you give us a little update on what's going on there? Sure, Ingrid. I was new to the job. Um, my underlying philosophy is we've gotten too big at Intel Capital. I want to be uh, an investor in companies where Intel and my team is adding value to those companies. Um, when you're making 60 new investments a year, it's very difficult to keep the focus on how we can add value and differentiate ourselves uh, from our competitors. So. I took a look at the portfolio. There are things that, you know, investments that got made five, ten years ago that don't fit and we're not adding a lot of value. Um, I came to the conclusion very quickly, though, uh, that it was best to keep those investments at home, um, make sure we followed through on the promise we made to each of them. Um, it's a, unfortunate it leaked out into the public domain that we took a look, but we did. I communicated with all of my CEOs and portfolio companies, and frankly, apologize to them for the noise that I created. But the new guy on the job, I think it was important for me to look at everything, and I have in the last year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> difficult question, but did you actually get people approaching you to say, yeah, we'll take that? Uh, look, the portfolio of companies we have is terrific. Um, if, the one thing I've been blessed with in my job is a team of seasoned, uh, hardworking professionals that source every important good deal. We, we see everything in the valley. Um, so yes, there were people that wanted to come if we were selling uh, part of the portfolio and make us offers, but we didn't take any of them and we didn't engage with anyone. It never got that far. That's really interesting. So there were, there were uh, others expressing interest in, sure. in uh, taking it over. It's a great portfolio, yeah. Was it at that one billion price tag? Because that was what was reported as the asking price. Ingrid, we never got <laughs> to any decision around which companies would be included right. or not. So it's hard to answer that question. Um, there were people outside of Intel Capital that had been at Intel Capital historically that wanted to play a role in right. uh, any transaction if it were to happen. And I think they were feeding information out there as to what they wanted, not what I wanted. Interesting, yeah. Okay, so, but that, that exercise when you were joining, you were, you were looking at what was there, you decided to keep it all. Um, have you guys in any way started to sort of shift what your areas of interest are, though? I, I feel like you kind of have. So talk uh, us a little through that. Yeah, my philosophy is uh, if there's an investment that's directly aligned with one of our business units, that should really be M&A. That shouldn't be uh, right. Intel Capital. Intel Capital is here to be making investments in disruptive technologies, in tangential opportunities, different business models than Intel itself is executing. Right. Um, to me, we're the eyes and ears of what the world's going to look like 10 years from now. And that philosophy, I, I think under my predecessor, it was very much a financial return driven um, right. VC. And we are now trying to be a pathfinding VC um, and really create opportunity where we at Intel can add value to the portfolio companies, accelerate their route to market, differentiate their technology, um, and hopefully do a little bit of corporate building along the way too. Right. So now this week, 
there was a really big new piece of news on Intel investing, um, which was taking, um, I, it, there wasn't a value on it, but it was like a 15% stake yes, 15%. in here. Was that done through Intel Capital or through Intel itself? Uh, it was done through Intel Capital, okay. absolutely, yes. Um, and you know, one of the themes that CES and we have internally is the autonomous car is coming. Yep. Um, we have to have a place in that business model there's too much data that gets created at the car. There's too much processing um, going on in the cloud and the communication links between. We have to be there. Uh, mapping is going to be critical to the autonomous car going forward. And here, in our mind, is the best uh, group of partners and the best mapping technology out there. So it was important for us to partner with BMW, Audi, um, and Daimler. Yeah, I mean, it, they're a really interesting company. I've been covering them for years um, when they were still even at Nokia, so I agree. <laughs> um, but do you, um, it's interesting because it's a massive investment. I mean, I, you obviously didn't disclose the value, but I know what the value, the valuation of here is pretty high when, when it was bought by the three car companies. Um, was that to get a seat at the table? Did you have to go that high, or did you want to go that high? Look, I, my philosophy is I want to own 10 to 20% right. of the places we make investments. It lets me and us have a seat at the board. It lets us yep. impact the direction of the companies. Um, this one happened to be fairly large, you're right, but yep. it's very much in line with our investment philosophy broadly. Do you want to give us a value for it? I, I don't think we disclosed it on purpose, but... <laughs> You know, if you go back to when the three auto manufacturers bought and you calculate yep. what 15% of that looks yep. like, you're going to be pretty close. That's what I did in my story, <laughs> so good. Glad to hear that. Um, now, um, I know that your background is um, you've been doing finance and investment stuff for, for years now. You were Before Intel, you were at Citigroup, I think. Uh, I, was yeah. at, I was at Allen and Company, and before and that, Co I was at Citigroup. Right. Yes. Okay. So you, you you spent time in investment bank. You, you've done it. You've done a lot of this. But before that, you trained as an engineer. I did. Uh, I'm a proud University of Michigan Wolverine engineer. So, <laughs> not a lot Any of Michigan, Wolverines out Michigan there. Michigan people out there. <laughs> okay. So, how has that helped you in the tech investing world? Because I mean, there are a lot of VCs out there without technical training. They're not on. They're not entrepreneurs. They're not science people or you know tech people they are just finance people but you've kind of come from a world of both so how is that changing what you do looking around i think the engineering background in me uh, really is it's facilitated I, I like to think i'm very good at asking questions um yeah. I, I love to learn and i sit in the best job in all of silicon valley in my perspective because i'm seeing every new technology uh, out there, I'm at the world's greatest engineering company in Intel, and I have three to five hundred million dollars a year that we're deploying consistently uh, across ventures. So, uh, the engineering background gives me a little bit of technical insight, but it's really about asking questions and not being afraid to be ignorant and learning as you go. So, what, what's your opinion, though, in general, on the state of that in the VC world? I mean, so. It's kind of interesting because I sort of wonder if um, the corporate VCs, the ones that are coming from tech companies, do you think that they're making, I mean, maybe you have a biased answer here, but do you think they're making smarter investments? What, what is your, what, look, what's I, yours? Do you think some VCs are not going in it with their eyes open? I mean, look at Theranos. <laughs> I, I, look, I would love to be uh, a, a, a leader that pulls the corporate VCs together on a better basis than we have historically. Um, what better partner to have in a healthcare big data company than Johnson & Johnson in yeah. their venture arm? Um, you know, they're going to like vet a little harder, right? Correct. And we're going to keep, keep each other honest as corporate VCs mm. if we're around the table together and alleviate some of the fear that entrepreneurs might have that, you know, we, we're there to take their technology and bring it into us, the corporate entity. Yeah. Um, I feel like w we should be about helping them accelerate their route to market by bringing our technology to bear there because no startup is going to, you know, at least not very quickly uh, surpass Intel in a market cap or size perspective, but we can sure help them get to IPO stage or 100 million, 200 million notional value faster than a traditional financial VC can. Right. Um, 
now I know that, so I was speaking with Hugo Barra at Xiaomi yesterday, and we were talking a little bit about Xiaomi's investment strategy. They've been backing a ton of companies, um, more or less to sort of widen their ecosystem. Um, and their, their whole kind of position is we have no intention of ever buying any one of these companies. Um, and you earlier were saying you guys also don't have necessarily a, a drive to buy. You guys have. I know I've written about several acquisitions you guys have made of portfolio companies. But yeah. I think over the last year we've bought 11 companies out of the portfolio into okay. Intel, um, which sounds a big number, except that there's a 400 portfolio uh, 400 entity portfolio sitting there. The, you know, there are going to be opportunities. We're going to get to know these companies better than we would uh, other companies that we're not invested in. And sometimes they approach us and say, why don't we come together? So yeah. you know, that's the best of both worlds when it happens. But my mentality is never to be, uh, have Intel Capital be a funnel for M&A. It's completely to be bringing the power of Intel to bear against those companies. Um, and helping them succeed. But having said that, <laughs> are you guys, I mean, exit is always the, the end point of any VC investment. Um, so <laughs> I think, <laughs> for good VC, I suppose. But like, what is your sort of, like, how much are you helping them find other homes eventually? You know, is that something you guys are doing much of? Or? When it comes time that they want um, a monetization outcome, yeah. I think we have an unparalleled network of corporate clients of Intel, um, other VCs, strategic relationships, and we can help that process by accessing potential buyers on a level um, others can't. So yeah. we, we, you know, it's been a little bit of a dry 2016 when it comes to liquidity. Um, yeah. I'm hopeful that the IPO market opens this year. Uh, all of my ex-banking friends are, are very optimistic that that's going to happen, but the proof will be in the pudding. I think there's some very large unicorns likely to tap the market in the first quarter here. Mm -hmm. And if they do it successfully, it'll be a better place for all of us when it comes to liquidity. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, looking Snapchat, Airbnb might be a good one to, yep. to go out, I think. Not Uber yet, um, but I don't know. Okay, let's take our, turn our attention to CES. Um, what have you, what's wowed you here? Uh, look, number one. <laughs> you can't um, mention uh, Intel. <laughs> uh, well, the commitment across so many companies around autonomous uh, vehicles, autonomous yeah. robots, autonomous drones, um, the data that's going to be created. You know, I, I hope that our uh, friends at AT&T and Verizon are really making the progress uh, around 5G because we're going to need that connectivity. Um, I've been very pleasantly surprised by the amount of sports uh, activity going on at CES this year. and. You know, I, I'm a little biased. We've made a couple of big investments in sports in the past year. And I think uh, technology is going to fundamentally change the way we all consume sports. And it's going to be much more personalized as opposed to the linear feed broadcast that we've gotten for the last 50 years. Yeah. So have you guys seen anything here you might want to back? Are you scouting in that way? or are you... I'm, yeah, uh, Of course, Ingrid, and I'm not going to go any further than that on stage here at the moment. But yeah, I think uh, you there's can a lot of me. prospects out there I've seen. <laughs> okay. Um, so sports tech is interesting, and, and you're talking really about delivery rather than like quantified physics, you know, uh, I, I, I quantified think self stuff. Sensor technology when it comes to uh, prolonging athletes' careers, helping train youngsters that want to yeah. pursue sport. Um, there's a lot of very interesting models, health and safety driven, training driven. Um, our investments to date have been around Voke and yeah. Replay Technologies, which are immersive technologies to let you consume sports as a, a fan in a way you haven't been able to historically. Yeah. No, those are pretty incredible yep. too. So, All right. Well, thank you so much, Wendell. Um, appreciate you coming and talking to us on a Saturday. Uh, well, now we uh, get to be up here and spend some of TechCrunch's money. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.